Have you ever looked online for like the best hiking boots and just seem to come across like paid advertisements or reviews that are just by paid sponsors? If you're looking for an honest review for the best hiking boots for both men and women based on 20 years of field testing in the harshest conditions, then stay tuned. We're going to save you the pain and the endless hours of having to comb through all those paid advertisements trying to find the best hiking boots. We're embracing the next chapter by simplifying our lives, exploring our dreams, and connecting with what truly matters. In this video, we're going to share with you some of the pains the military learn in regards to finding, quote, the best hiking boots and the millions of dollars spent to find the best hiking boots for our special operations forces. Not only are we going to give you the military's best choice of hiking boot, but our personal opinion of using these brands on all of our adventures over the last 10 years. We want you guys to know that we're not being paid or influenced at all by any companies in doing this video. This is solely based huh? on just our... Solely, get it? <laughs> just our personal experiences in doing our adventures out here. Dad joke. <laughs> and stay tuned to the end because we're also going to give you the two best brands of socks that we use. And you're going to want to have these in your kit for any time you go doing any hiking or any type of outdoor activity. So 20 years ago, when military special operations forces began preparing for operations in Afghanistan, we were literally given some cash and told to go down to the local outdoor store to purchase the gear that we thought we'd need for the conditions in Afghanistan and in the Hindu Kush mountains. Well, we ended up with a lot of different boot options, and luckily this gave us some great testing grounds to see which boots are actually the best. One of the first things we noticed was that many of the popular hiking boots used on the trails and day hikes in the U.S. would get shredded in the mountainous conditions of Afghanistan. I literally saw a guy with a brand new pair of one of the most popular brands of hiking boots shred these boots in a matter of days. So luckily shortly after this, the military got smart and actually started doing some R&D into the best hiking boots they can provide for us special operations forces when we're working overseas. So I got to be a part of that, but Jenny and I are going to base this review on our personal use of these same two boots over the last 20 years with all our adventures. So the first brand that we recommend is the Oslo brand and Jenny specifically uh, wearing the Fugitive GTX. She's had uh, two different pairs of these boots and they've held up really well. So these are the boots that we use when we're in more austere conditions and when we don't know what we might run into. These are basically like our go-to boots for hiking, camping, overlanding, or anything outdoor related. The Oslo Fugitive GTX hiking boot is one of the toughest and most comfortable boots we've ever worn. We've used these in all conditions from the desert to mud to snow and they are bomb proof. However, on my last pair, I literally wore the soles off these suckers after years of use. And I'll be honest, there was one night of camping that my feet got really cold and I was putting my boots over the fire and I think I might have melted one of the soles off a little bit and it never was the same. Yeah. The Oslo Fugitive has been a popular mid-weight hiking boot for over a decade now, and this is mainly based on our use uh, of these in Afghanistan with the Special Operations Forces. Um, it has a relatively stiff midsole and a forefront paired up with a, a tall but flexible ankle collar, which gives you great support for difficult terrain. And I know I really like this when I'm in rocky terrain like we are today because it gives you that uh, great ankle support so you don't end up rolling your ankle. So similar boots to this that have this much foot support you usually have a much more substantial and rigid upper that stabilizes the ankle, but that also adds a lot of significant weight to the boots. With the Oslos, you get a, the kind of the best of both, and that's why I think so many people love these. So the light uppers on this feel really great on your foot, and the high ankle collar is great for water and snow protection, but the stiff midsole supports your foot like a much heavier boot, but you don't add that weight to it. The Fugitive's Vibram sole provides decent traction and excellent grip on most trail surfaces, and this boot handles muddy conditions really well. The sole is fairly firm, which is a mixed blessing. It helps on loose scree-type surfaces and on rugged, uneven ground. One of Oslo's great strengths is its waterproofing. It takes an effort to get your feet wet. The upper's synthetic materials soak up almost no water and the leather portions maintained their water resistance longer than most other brands. On top of this, the Fugitive has one of the highest flood heights, nearly seven inches. This is a great option for muddy or wet trails. 
the Oslo Fugitives enjoy the reputation of being a durable midway boot. And uh, we've had pairs of these now for six or seven years that show really little sign of wear. The toe cap will kind of crack a little bit slightly after a few years, but this has really no bearing on the performance. It just looks a little bit used. Both the leather and the burly Condor nylon portions of the upper can handle some rough abuse. Like with most of our modern disposable outdoor footwear, the seam on the inside of the foot where the leather meets the condor is prone to coming unstitched on the fugitive. And that's what happened with Jenny's when she lost her soul after, after cooking them over the campfire. But I've heard that a bit of seam sealer here will help keep the threads stay put longer. This boot has a roomy interior with a big toe box, so you get no blisters. I've worn thin and thick socks without any problem. That makes them good for cold or hot conditions. From desert to rocky cliff trails to thick, thick, annoying rainforest mud, you can pretty much smash through anything like a tank with these hiking boots. So the second brand that we highly recommend is a Solomon brand, and I've worn both the Quest 4Ds overseas when I'm working, and I'm, today I'm wearing the X Ultra 3 Mid GTXs. So these are more of our everyday light to mid-duty type boots because they're light like a trail shoe, but also super sturdy and able to handle long distances really well. So this boot only weighs about 2.28 pounds. So these are kind of the boots that we use when we want to go really long distances. When you're going long distances, comfort is key and you don't want blisters or excessive heat and sweating in the boots. These Salomons bring running shoe comfort when doing more technical hikes and come with sculpted linings. And a contoured heel cup that cradles your foot and minimizes slippage during those nasty uphill climbs or when you're coming down those epic descents. So these boots have Gore-Tex waterproof liners that let your feet breathe, but also it protects them from the water and the elements. These, uh, like Jenny said, they're sculpted to hold your feet in place and prevent slippage for more stable descents. So the advanced chassis are, are surrounded by foam cushioning for comfort and connect directly to the soles to stabilize your heels. The soft lining in these also wick moisture away from your feet and prevent sweating. So these boots have a mid-cut profile which adds ankle support and protection, but it also provides maximum comfort when you're on the trail. So these boots are not as light as trail runners or some of the more soft style hiking boots, but they also don't sacrifice too much stability either. Um, you know, these are great in between boots, but I've also used these in some nasty conditions overseas as well. The Salomons lock the foot into place through their speed lacing system, as well as a padded collar that securely and comfortably wraps around the ankle. Salomon calls this their sense of fit system and it's meant to give a customized, comfortable fit. The true fit to size, the toe box is roomy enough to wiggle your toes, but not so wide to result in a sloppy fit. The predominantly nylon and suede outer flexes easily without the necessary break-in period common to many hiking boots. So the Salomons also have a contragrip sole that has great traction and grip, but it's thinner than the Oslo's. The thick rubber cap on the end of the toe box is really nice and I appreciate that because it keeps us from stubbing our toes or tripping on rocks and roots on the trail. For all its lightweight trail runner type attributes, the X Ultra Mid 3 is quite stable and supportive. Compared to the Oslo's, this boot is less tall and is not designed for the more heavy and rugged terrain. But these are amazing for light and medium trails or even just everyday wear. Hi guys, we just hiked six or seven miles and we're really tired. <laughs> but then we remembered that we need to show you our socks that we use. Here they are. <laughs> we're, we have the Thanks darn tufts on. <laughs> because they wick away moisture um, in the heat and it's Arizona in the middle of October. Huh. It's still very hot. Yeah. Um, so and Darn Tough. Darn yeah. Tough is the first brand. And then Smart Wools in the winter when it's cold because they're nice and toasty warm. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. Darn Tough, Smart Wool. Two that we highly recommend and our son's actually using these right now in his uh, intensive training secret training we can't talk about in public uh, but he's also using them for his training as well so uh, <laughs> check them out we've, we've never had an issue with them they're awesome darn tough and smart wool mm -hmm. all right it's time for some rum and coke